Thank you, Sugar. Um, before talking to um, Mayor Peduto, I, I'm gonna, we're going to show a trailer of the documentary Paris to Pittsburgh, which should be fairly self-explanatory. It's like one of those talk shows where you get to see a trailer before the star. The United States will withdraw from the Paris Climate Accord. I was elected to represent the citizens of Pittsburgh, not Paris. Pittsburgh. Now, what was upsetting about that, and that alliteration, was a stereotype of our past. But Pittsburgh is poised and ready to lead in the 21st century. We're seeing cities and states and companies and individuals saying we are still in, even with the president pulling us out of one of the most important treaties, when every other major country in the world has said we are going to come together and commit to dealing with climate change. Shot at how, how close the water is encroaching just on the beach. beach. Sea level rise is completely apparent in my life. We had six and a half foot of water on the main level of the house for over a week. Stuff that was in our bedroom wound up in the garage, and stuff that was in the garage, I imagine that's way down in Louisiana now. The storms are becoming stronger in Puerto Rico. The worst thing is to think that that reality will repeat. Not a lot survived that fire in Ventura County. It burned so hot that everything just liquefied. And not be able to save anything. It was just really hard. If we're going to avoid breaching catastrophic levels of warming, we need to be putting our foot on the renewable energy acceleration pedal. The transformation towards a renewable energy future is the greatest economic opportunity of the 21st century. Businesses have lined up to say, we're still committing to the Paris Accord because it's good for their bottom line. My daughter, Faye, she made a decision that when was where she wanted to be. This is an opportunity that hasn't been available in America for a long, long time. The solar industry is offering that second chance opportunity to individuals like myself. It doesn't matter if you're Republican, Democrat, Independent, you have a role to play here. And if we look at it as an American Marshall Plan, we can exceed the goals of the Paris Agreement. This is the start of us taking control of our future. We have the right to a future. We have the right to these basic necessities that we need to live. We the people we need to take action. Our lives are at stake here. Bill Peduto, um, Mayor of Pittsburgh, welcome. Um, Thanks, you're, uh, for those of more observant members of the audience, you'll note that you now have a beard. This is your yeah. undercover, this is undercover boss look, um, oh, yeah. which again is the similarities with the movie star. Can we begin with Pittsburgh? Sure. What, people talk about climate change a lot, mm -hmm. but people think of cities like Pittsburgh as being somewhat of somehow outside of that. G give me some examples of how climate change has really affected what you run. Well, you know, I, I like to say that there is a certain significance when a city like Pittsburgh stands up to say that we're making the transition. It's one thing if it's coming from Berkeley or Boulder or Burlington. Mm -hmm. You're expecting that. Pittsburgh, it's um, the city where coal was discovered in North America. City of Steel. The city of Steel, the city that sits on the Marcella Shale, one of the mm. largest deposits of natural gas, where it's just 40 miles north, oil was discovered in North America. And a city that went through a really amazing transition from economic collapse, where we had unemployment at 20%, mm. greater than during the Great Depression, where we lost more people than New Orleans lost after Katrina. And we were respectful of our past, of who we were as steel workers and mine workers and how that's part of who we are today, but that our future didn't have to be wedded to that. And we have been able to make the transition and build out a new city that is basically built upon technology and engineering, medicine and science, finance and other fields and today in Pennsylvania, there are more people employed in the renewable energy field than coal, oil, and gas combined. And guess who's leading that? Pittsburgh. 
And do you, you've talked about having a Marshall Plan. Yes. Can you just explain that, a Marshall Plan for this particular? Well, you know, I did a lot of thought, and most people in uh, the Rust Belt did, about what happened in 2016. How was it that Democrats who had voted Democrat for a generation ended up voting to support President Trump? Mm. And there was a real disconnect between the message that we were putting out and what people were looking for. So when we talked about how we were going to close all the mines and there would be unemployment, it wasn't really a clarion a great, call. A great to get, vote seller. Yeah, yeah, to get people to support. And what Donald Trump offered them was a false hope that he was going to reopen the mines and bring back the steel mills, which wasn't going to happen. But when you get no hope versus false hope, you gravitate towards the false hope. So the question was, how do we make a message other than we're going to teach you how to become coders, which mm. is tone deaf, to be able to win the hearts and minds of those that live in the rural areas? And you can substitute the Rust Belt USA for Germany or for France yep. or for the UK. How do you get those that helped to build those countries during the previous industrial revolution to come back and to understand how renewable energy can be there? You allow them to see themselves in the future. For so many of these people, they look and they see all these things that we're talking about, and they see no place for them, no place for their children. You see areas in our cities that are being gentrified, and nobody sees a place where they're going to be able to afford to go to that restaurant or to be able to move into that new apartment building. And we have to be able to look at both of those sides. And you're seeing it with the yellow vests. Socialists and nationalists marching mm -hmm. together and be able to say there is a place for you in the future. The American Marshall Plan is that opportunity. And what are the specifics of that? It is a geographical based economic development strategy that looks to the areas that have been left behind through the transition of the new economy mm -hmm. and says those empty factories, we can reopen them through tax incentives that would be able to provide equity to a company to manufacture wind turbines in West Virginia, to be able to use American steel made in Ohio to be able to supply that, to be able to assemble solar panels in Michigan, and to be able to use the materials coming from southwestern Pennsylvania to do it. And in that same way, to be able to turn people who are former miners into those that are building the renewable energy revolution. And how much is that going to cost? It would cost hundreds of millions of dollars with a return in the areas that we're subsidizing now through federal dollars that are going to pay for unemployment benefits, uh, subsidies for food, subsidies for housing. And those subsidies would be turned into a paycheck in which they were paying back their tax revenue in a cycle that would restore communities, rebuild an economy, move the transition from fossil to renewable, and check so many more boxes than just what one subsidy could do in any other type of economic development strategy. Let me put it like this. It's not going to happen. It is happening. And the question is whether the United States decides to let the rest of the world do it and where we're purchasing our wind turbines from Germany, our solar panels from India, and the assemblage in China, or if we are doing it in the areas that have been left behind and allowing them to be I was the just leaders. about to interrupt you on that. The, so, the solar panels are a classic example, surely, of an industry where America has you know, given up the leadership, where other people actually now have it. Without a doubt. It's not a question of whether we'll fall behind. We're behind. And it's always going to be cheaper on the whole to manufacture those things in China or assemble them there. Not necessarily. You know, there, then this goes back to an, uh, an argument uh, that we're, we were moving towards under the Obama administration that is now off the table needs to come back. And it's the issue of fair trade. Mm. Fair trade values the worth of people and the value of our planet in making decisions on how we trade. So if we look at fair trade, there are groups, and Pittsburgh is the home of the Blue-Green Alliance, where the United Steelworkers and the Sierra Club came together and said, good jobs, green jobs, and have pushed an agenda for this type of fair trade. If we have fair trade policies in place, we will be able to benefit our planet while helping all people to rise up into a salary that will allow them to become, on a global stage, 
part of a middle class. If we have that, then it will be a competition of innovation and ideas that will drive it, not in policy of who can provide the highest tariffs to take it to the lowest denominator. That becomes part of a more of a global discussion that has to be a part of this discussion we're having today. What about Pittsburgh itself, the city? I very often get told by an ex-mayor how vital mayors are. I mean, what, what, what change are you actually able to drive in Pittsburgh? Every mayor thinks they're at the center of the universe when Strange it comes to that, their city. Yeah. <laughs> so um, part of that is true in the sense of you need to be able to take the slings and arrows that, that come with being part of that job, and you need to promote as a whole the goodness of your city. Um, but at the other part, and I said this when over in Poland this week, the new leadership is partnership. And the mayor's job is not to do all of the things, but to bring together all the key stakeholders in order to do it. Since Donald Trump has become president, cities around the United States have realized these new partnerships, partnering with universities, partnering with hospitals, partnering with nonprofits, foundations, corporations, being able to have a vision and then putting it forward without needing federal assistance. And on clean energy in particular, what, give, give an example of what a mayor can do on that, or which you did in Pittsburgh. Uh, we are partnering right now with the Danish government, looking at all of our different systems of energy delivery within the city, and then saying, how can we break away from this whole concept of a grid, where energy is produced 40 miles away, and, and basically building throughout each of our major developments in the city, a microgrid system that then becomes a connected system on a micro scale. On top of that, we're putting in new initiatives, getting federal assistance through the Obama administration and the state for the smartest traffic signals in the world. Signals that actually learn, that use real-time data to improve efficiency by 33% without building any additional lanes. And being able then to connect that to the vehicles themselves to be able to create a whole new system of mobility. It'd be very on, good if you could export that to London, I think. Well, then on top of that, we're building out our electric system envisioning the next wave of electric vehicles and having the capacity to fuel them in those corridors. And we call it the smart spine system. So that's just one example of how a city becomes a system of systems and is able to do it at the scalability of that do local think, level. Do you think cities are actually the best place to do this because oh. they're the right kind of size? You don't, you're not dealing with something as big as a country. You're dealing with a spe specific area. It's, it's great that countries are talking about these treaties on environment, on refugee situation, on all these major issues, but when it gets down to it, who is actually implementing it? Cities. And when you talk to mayors from around the world, we find all of these problems to have very viable solutions that are just numbers in how much. So if we talk about a refugee crisis that's occurring in Syria, we can sit around and say, I can take 813. I can take, and we can solve it at a local level. When we talk about climate change, and I want people to be optimistic about this because it's where it's going to happen. We can get to the specific amount of how we can reduce our carbon footprint on a local level and be able to deliver that. What we need to do is have one set of metrics, which the Edmonton Doctrine provides us, and the ability to measure it on an annual basis. But no matter what a federal elected official says, you can't stop cities from doing it anyway. And that's what's happening in the United One's States. One very last thing, what was your reaction, and, and please, as quickly as possible, what was your reaction when President Trump said, I represent Pittsburgh, not Paris? Pretty much the same as that, that view. Um, I, I was shocked because I was in Paris I uh, was one of 500 mayors, um, and I was elected to represent the people of Pittsburgh, who, by the way, voted for Hillary Clinton with 75% of the vote. But the fact was is that I watched my city die. I watched people sacrifice. I watched that transition happen, and I watched him being using for iteration the stereotype of what Pittsburgh was. Yeah in order to try and make a political point. And for 35 years, we worked to become that example of exactly what the Paris Agreement says. 
and I was upset that he used my city in that way. Mayor, thank you very, very much. Thank you. I will be. Thanks, John. I should. I should, I should repeat that your, your latest movie opens tonight, tonight. Um, in, in, in London on the National Geographic Channel, as I understand it. Um, we're now going to invite up to the stage to talk um, uh, Gina McCarthy, who had the pleasure of sitting next door last night, a former head of the EPA and now running the Climate Change Center at Harvard. Gina, we hand over to you. And Mr. Mayor, we will leave. Thank you. Thank you.